Hello everybody and welcome. Today I'm going to be doing a bit of a walkthrough through one of my favorite games, Marvel Heroes. It's an awesome ARPG that takes you into the world of Marvel, obviously. And what this is going to be is primarily a sort of guide for beginning players to sort of show them the ropes. Uh, just some little stuff that you might miss, uh, how to find good stuff, where to go, all that kind of stuff. So without further ado, what I'm going to do here is I am going to start off with a so-called new character and just start from the very beginning. So this is the opening cinematic that you see. And for now, I'm going to skip all of the uh, cinematics, although I think they are really cool. So this is where you start off uh, when you first begin the game. Uh, you'll have your starting hero. You'll have a couple of powers, and you'll have a really cool little mission to do here in Queens. So the basic things here are just how to move around. You just left click in order to move around. Every uh, character starts off with several powers. You start off with a basic attack power. You start off with a basic movement power of some sort. And you start off with a spirit spending power. So spirit is sort of like mana, if you've ever played any other games similar to this. And then obviously you have your health down here. Here's your uh, spirit right here. And uh, there's a couple of quick things to go over right here. First and most importantly are the menus. The arguably most important thing here is help. You can find all sorts of information on pretty much anything in the game. Very, very important, very, very comprehensive, and also just generally very helpful. Uh, pretty much anything and everything you could want to know about the game, you can find in here. Great information. The next thing are the settings. If you want to change what it looks like, if you want to change how the keys are bound, so here you've got the different powers which correspond to these down here. Uh, you've got all the different stuff that you'll need throughout the game. Just uh, pretty much anything and everything. These hotkeys actually change what's involved with your right click. So once you have too many things, then you can use that to swap them out as needed. And uh, recently they added in additional bars. So that way basically down here you can click these arrows. And when you do that, then you have multiple bars for your powers. Although I'll get into that a little bit more later. Uh, for now, uh, the settings are basically the key bindings. If you want to change the way that uh, the game generally works, if you want to uh, change what buttons you use to do whatever action, uh, you can. You don't have to. I personally didn't change anything. I didn't really find the need to. Uh, but if you do, then by all means, uh, go ahead and do it. Uh, so for that, I'm going to be walking through the first couple of little missions. This is actually the uh, prologue of the initial missions. And essentially, this is uh, just sort of to get your feet wet in the game and uh, just show you what's going on, how to do it, uh, sort of uh, give you an introduction to uh, whatever the new character is. Uh, like I said, this is something that you uh, can go through with all of the characters that you play, although eventually you'll get to the point where you can actually skip all this. Uh, for these purposes, like I said, this is mostly for beginners, so I'll walk through uh, pretty much the entirety of at least the initial part. Uh, so I'll just take her out. There we go. Excellent. Oh, right. So if you didn't notice, I am playing as Nightcrawler. Uh, he was actually just very recently released. And he is my favorite Marvel character of all time, so that's why I'm playing him. And not only that, but I'm playing him several times, uh, which I'll get into a bit more later. All right, so this is going to be the next portion of the prologue here. And skip that again. As I get started here in the Rift, there's a, there are a couple of little things that I'd like to go over as far as the movement is concerned, at least as far as the defaults are concerned. If you hold shift while you attack, then or while you click, then instead of moving, you'll just do whatever the left attack is that you have uh, currently bound there. And by the same token, if you hold control, 
then instead of attacking as you normally would by clicking on somebody, you'll just move. And that's a nice way to uh, get out of tight spots and things like that. Uh, if you're surrounded by enemies and all you end up doing is doing your left attack instead of actually moving out of the way. Okay? So right now, uh, like I said, I'm in the rift. This is still part of the uh, general uh, prologue for the game, the sort of introductory phase. And uh, at this time, whenever I start up a new character, one thing that I like to do is look over the powers. This is uh, something that you should do uh, regardless of who you're starting with and regardless of how you intend on playing them. Uh, it's good to, at the very, very least, uh, you can read over a lot of the powers that they have, how they work, uh, which ones spend spirit, which ones are what they call basic, or in other words, don't spend spirit. Uh, so right now, uh, after I finish this up here, I'll go ahead and open up. This is what the power window looks like. So you can see every character will have three trees just like this. And you put in the powers based on these little plus signs here. So I'll go ahead and get Blink Strike because I really like Blink Strike. And uh, just to have something else, I'll increase my passive there a little bit. Give me the strength to use this gift wisely. So with Nightcrawler, he's one of the characters where I, I know what I want to do uh, once the time is there. And so I don't spend all of my uh, power points right away, although it's not really a bad thing to do. It's actually generally a pretty good idea to spend the powers as you get them. And same thing with items. If you get new items that can work with your character, then by all means, certainly go ahead and use them. I'll go ahead and click that. Uh, so like I said, this is just something where you can test things out, read over the powers. Um, Obviously right now you won't be able to do any true testing uh, because you're so low level. But again, just reading the powers, you can read up on the flavor. And later on you can start to figure out if that's the type of build that you want to go with or if you want to change it and do something different. Uh, but for now, uh, you could just stick with that basically. Uh, so typically you've got a general easy build for any character will have several key features. Uh, arguably the most important feature will be either a good solid basic attack or a relatively inexpensive uh, spirit spending attack to deal with these guys that I'm attacking right now uh, which are commonly called trash mobs or just the guys that are sort of hanging around doing whatever. And the reason that you want that is just a quick way to deal with them, get rid of them. Okay, particularly if they're not in groups. All right? If you have larger groups, then you want another type of attack, which is generally an AOE, or an area of effect, spirit attack. Uh, what that'll do is that'll clear out guys really, really fast. For example, on Nightcrawler right now, I've got Blink Strike, which is actually an attack where he teleports frequently and bounces off uh, the bad guys. Uh, which is great because it takes uh, takes out several at a time where it normally can, just like that. And it's not exceedingly expensive as far as spirit is concerned, right? Uh, so other than that, uh, you want to keep the movement power available, or you typically want to, because that will help you move quicker. And some characters will have a flight power. Uh, flight is obviously very, very nice because it lets you get around faster. And a lot of the flight powers will also help you out with just your regular movement in addition to helping you out with uh, pretty much any other type of basic movement at all, right? And the one of the other key things that you want to have in your character is a maxed attack that will let you kill bosses because bosses will be very, very difficult, or maybe not exceedingly difficult, but relatively difficult anyway. For Nightcrawler, I use this attack, which is X-Slash, and that is a really good, very powerful sword attack that will take down bosses very quickly, right? And uh, as far as passives are concerned, the vast majority of characters have passes, at least it passes, passives, I'm sorry, as far as I know at least. And as far as the passives go, typically you'll have a general split between offensive and defensive. And generally they're what you call one point wonders, where in other words you just put a single point into them and it works great and that's all that you need. Uh, typically they, they tend not to scale extremely well as you increase the power levels but basically some characters have really good passives that you want to take all the way up to the maximum skill level which is 20 and some of them just not so much all right 
So uh, with that, that, uh, uh, that sort of concludes my basic talks on that. And uh, the only other little note for characters is sometimes it can take a little while before you really start to enjoy them. So play a character to at least level 20 or 30. Uh, if you do that, then you can really get a better feel for them, how they play, how they work, all that kind of stuff. And the other thing to think about is what type of characters you like. Uh, you've got a mixture of melee focused characters, you've got ranged focused characters, and you also have characters that are pretty good on both. You have hybrid characters. Just depending on your particular play style, you might have one of each, you might have a little bit of everything, uh, whatever you want. It really is completely up to you. So with that, I'm going to move on just a little bit and start talking about some of the basic stuff within the game, starting off with the vendors. So starting with the vendors, some of the most important ones that you'll be running into are going to be the gear and the weapon vendor. So in this case, I'm in Aven Avengers Tower, and here is the gear vendor here. This was recently changed to a new style. Instead of uh, paying credits for specific items, you actually can get random items, or you can just buy specific items. But I'll talk a little bit more about that later. You've also got this guy over here, the weapon vendor, who's very similar to the gear vendor and you can just buy stuff off of him. Uh, arguably the most important vendor that you can start off with, though, is this guy, the Crafter. All right, for those of you who don't know, Hank Pym is actually Ant-Man from the Marvel Universe, and the Crafter is where you get a lot of your power from. And not only the power, but uh, essentially just clearing out stuff from your inventory. Right, so you start off with, these are the basic crafting elements here. So these are some of the more advanced ones that I've collected. But basically, you want to get your crafter very, very high very, very quickly, mostly because of some of these things, the costumes. When you add things to your costume, you can add visual effects, and you can also add mechanistic effects that really, really help your character do better in fight. You can have either the defensive or offensive affixes added to costumes that will actually help you in your battle. And then you've got gear um, uh, crafting, which helps you do stuff like uh, you can change an item from uh, one person to another and uh, all this kind of stuff. You can upgrade. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Uh, some of the other little things, you can get little potions that help you uh, attack better, defend better, uh, give you better crit ratings, all sorts of uh, random stuff like that. And you can get what are called artifacts from this, uh, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. So one of the most important things about crafters is what we call leveling the crafters. The way that you level a crafter is very, very simple. All you need is some gear that you really don't care about, of which I have uh, quite a bit down here now, although I'm going to equip these gloves. Uh, but basically, to start off with gear itself, you've got several levels of gear. You start off with uh, the junk, the trash, and that's going to be things like this, the, the white or gray, which are common. And then you have uncommon, which is the next level, or green, and those are a little bit better. You notice uh, this particular one has an affix that gives me additional damage against targets attacking me, whereas the white is just a little bit of plus damage rating. Not so good, right? After the green, you have the blue, the rares. Rares uh, add an additional affix of some sort that will give you some other benefit. And then beyond that, you've got the purple, which is the epic. And I'll go over to my stash here to show you guys some examples of those. So here we've got all these purple items. And you can see they have uh, at least four or five affixes of all different sorts. They can grant powers. They can increase your damage. They can do all sorts of stuff. Beyond epic, you have cosmic. Cosmic level items are these yellow ones here, and they'll always say cosmic. And one of the cool things about these is, regardless, they always give you a plus one to all of your powers that you've got, which is extremely good. And in addition to that, a lot of the cosmic items will have a percent chance to do some cool effect. Typically, it'll be summoning a demon from the nether or something like that to help fight alongside you. So with that, uh, excuse me. <coughs> uh, so with that, I'll go over here to the newest of the uh, vendors, who is the Enchanter. The Enchanter was added just a little while ago, and only very recently uh, actually became active within the game. Uh, 
Uh, so what I'm going to do is right now I've got my crafter or this particular enchanter at level 13. So I'm going to donate several of these items to him. And the way that you donate is very simple. You just push alt and then right click on whatever the item is and then you donate. And what happens is this little experience bar goes up. After it goes up to the top, then you go up to level 14. You know, the maximum level for all of the vendors is actually 20. I, if you saw before, my crafter is currently maxed. I have everything available from the crafter vendor. The enchanter, like I said, is a brand new vendor. And this is where you get a lot of really cool stuff. I'll talk more about these later. But these are actually the rune recipes, the rune words. Uh, that can enchant and improve uh, some of the specific items that you can eventually get. Uh, and then this is specific for different slots on your hero for the uh, different gear, uh, which I'll also get uh, to in a little bit. Blessings are really, really interesting. It's, an, it's part of another uh, level of item, which are artifacts, uh, which look like this. They have this sort of orange background and like the reddish-orange hue uh, in the name. Uh, those are obviously artifacts, and they are specific named items that do very specific things. But uh, one of the issues with these is that it's random how good they are. You can have a very good item uh, or a relatively bad item, uh, in these cases of the artifacts. Uh, but that's why you go and you keep finding the artifacts, and you go and go and move and move and move. Right. Other than that, uh, there are two other major categories, uh, at least right now. Uh, the first is the Uru Forged, which was only recently added, and these are a new item that goes right here. Uh, uh, these are your main slots. This is for a ring. This is for a legendary item, which I happen to have on Nightcrawler. This is for a relic, which gives a, a specific boost, and you can stack them up. Uh, and then you've got your artifacts here. Uh, you've got a metal slot uh, that you get off of uh, different bosses at various times. And uh, like I said, the Uru Forge, those will give you uh, a damage rating on specific attack types, specific damage types. How do you find out what damage type you have? Very simply, look at the powers. For example, my Agile Strike does physical damage. Uh, pretty much all of Nightcrawler's attacks will do physical damage, which is why for him, I went with the physical damage Uru uh, Gauntlets. All right. And the last category of items are the unique items. These are arguably the rarest. It's, I mean, there's a lot of rarity between the Uru and the uniques and now the, um, the runes, although the runes are a little bit more common. But unique gloves, or unique whatever it happens to be, are specific to the character, obviously, because they are unique. And uh, again, they are specific named items that your character gets. And each character has at least one unique for each slot, each of these five major slots. Some have more than one, uh, but every character has at least one. Right? And typically these will be the pinnacle of uh, building up the best and greatest character that you possibly can. Right? Uh, other than that, there are a couple other vendors that we're going to go and visit. These are ones that you can't donate to though. Right? One uh, right here, Adam Warlock. Uh, these are the Eternity Splinters, uh, which I will talk about later on. But this is where you go if you want to spend your Eternity Splinters. Right? Once you know what those are, then you'll know what I'm talking about. All right, so that's where you go for that. And then Domino here uh, has the fortune cards as well as the rest of the store here, which again, I'll go into uh, later on in more detail. But the fortune cards specifically give you different items uh, basically depending on luck. It's just a form of gambling in the game, which isn't a bad thing. It's pretty cool and you can get some uh, really neat stuff from it. Last but certainly not least is one of my personal favorite um, vendors, and that is the cube shard vendor. Uh, this is how, where you spend cube shards, which you get from running terminals, uh, which uh, we'll, I'll talk about in my end game uh, portion. Right? And the cube shards, uh, you get one from each boss and you can get one each day. They're essentially daily quests that you can do. And you can get all sorts of cool stuff from these. Right? Uh, uh, one of my personal favorites are actually the fortune cards. You can buy fortune cards here for 10 cube shards a pop. Right? Uh, pretty cheap and again, you can get some really, really neat stuff. Okay? So the other major actual vendor over here is this guy. The supergroup sanctioning war machine. Okay, and what this does is this lets you make a supergroup. I uh, am part of a supergroup that is the Green Riding just below uh, my name up there, 
And essentially, it's just a group of people that you can hang out with, you can play with, whatever you want to do. It's essentially a permanent friends list uh, that you've always got, and that can be updated relatively easy and quickly with new people joining it. Okay? Um, and uh, that's pretty much it for uh, the ubiquitous vendors. These are in every single hub, every single mission hub. Uh, there are, however, a few that are specific to certain locations. And uh, basically the, the one location that's really specific is Odin's Palace. This is the last hub that you reach when you're playing the game, but it has some of uh, the most interesting uh, vendors. One of the vendors is the legendary item vendor, this guy right here. This is where I got, in this case, my Gungnir, okay? And these are exceedingly powerful items that can give you all sorts of really cool boons. Uh, but the only problem with these is that you actually need to upgrade them. You have to level them up just like you have to level up your character. Right? It's, it's an interesting concept and they make you exceedingly powerful, but you just need to take the time and essentially just grind through the game to get them. Okay? One of the other uh, unique vendors here in Odin's Palace is this guy or gal, I should say, the Siege Case Vendor. Uh, this is a way that you essentially get a random item of some sort. Okay, um, it's, I personally don't use these simply because I don't think it's a really good mechanic. Uh, you need two special drops from the Chapter 9 area. I'll get into the story a little bit later. But um, like I said, I personally don't really enjoy doing it and in general, you can't really get a, a lot of really good items from it. It's a lot easier just to go out and try to look for exactly what you want. Last but certainly not least, uh, the other major uh, vendor that you have here in Odin's Palace only is the PvP uh, ring vendor. Right? The, these are all unique rings, unique level rings. In other words, extremely powerful, lots of good affixes, uh, but Part of the problem is, in order to get them, you need to uh, play PvP. I personally don't do that, but I'm going to get into it later anyway, uh, just so that you know. And the way that you get them is by trading in these items, the Crown of Valor. When you win PvP matches, you earn Crowns of Valor, and once you have enough of them, then you can purchase a uh, unique PvP-only ring. So it is a, a pretty interesting system, and you can do some, some neat stuff, but like I said, personally, I uh, tend not to do it. Okay. All right. And with that, I'm going to move on a little bit into another very important aspect of the game, and that is the general user interface and uh, essentially what you can find out just by looking at your screen and pressing a couple of buttons. So one of the most important uh, aspects of this game, I believe anyway, is actually this map right up here. The map gives you all sorts of information. It shows you where your objectives are, and it shows you where all of the interesting vendors are. So you see, for example, the little Erlenmeyer flask there. That means that there is a crafter there. And then the money, in that case, means that there's somebody that you can uh, pay money to and buy something from. Right? And in that case, it's War Machine, the, uh, the sanctioner for the supergroups. One of the other important things about the map is tab, the button. If you press tab, the map goes full screen, or nearly full screen, so that you can tend to see it easier. I, I like to use this, especially if I'm hunting down specific quests, so that I can better see the objective markers and all that kind of stuff. In this case, you see this little doorway right here. That's my objective, and basically it's telling me I need to go to uh, some location in order to do the next objective. Okay, so with that, uh, the by default anyway, uh, the buttons that we're going to be talking about are first off, P and that is power. P is for power. And that just brings up this window right here. Okay. Uh, one of the other buttons is O, which gives you the social. Right? Social is going to be uh, things like uh, the friends that you have listed, anybody who's nearby you, in other words, anybody who's in your hub or nearby you when you're doing questing, whatever it happens to be. And by nearby, I don't know exactly how the game defines it, but it is definitely proximity related and not necessarily it's everybody in the hub. Uh, ignored, obviously, if you find people you don't like, stick them in there. And everybody who is in your supergroup, okay? So uh, social, very, very important that I'm going to get to that uh, later on when I talk about uh, player interaction and all that good kind of stuff. Okay. Um, other than that, uh, one of the other important bu buttons is T 
and what T will do is allow you to change out your heroes, right? You see here I've got a somewhat decent collection of heroes, and this is not only where you change what hero you're playing as, but you can also change the difficulty, right? Once you reach a certain level, you're going to unlock new difficulty levels, and then you can go and play on those new difficulty levels. So, for example, let's say I want to play a Cyclops. Now I'll select Cyclops, and I want to play on Super Heroic, and you just say Switch, and you can swap right out. Easy, easy, easy. Very, very nice. I like the system. I enjoy it. And it makes it easy to uh, switch when you've got so many characters, right? You don't have to wait for, you know, who knows what, uh, just to get onto a new character. Okay. Uh, one of the other buttons is X, which is the store, right? This is actually the in-game store. And if you remember Domino, the card vendor, uh, then you see all of the different stuff that you can actually buy in-game. And I'll go into more depth on that uh, when I talk about purchasing power and uh, buying stuff with uh, shards and the splinters and all of that kind of thing. Okay. Um, the... Uh, one of the other ones is the synergy, uh, the synergy window. Synergies are opened up with V, right? This is something that even I really tend to forget about a lot. There, see, I got it on Nightcrawl and I didn't even, didn't even do it, okay? Uh, so what synergies are is essentially when you get characters to high enough levels, in this case you got you go to 25 and 50, then you get specific bonuses uh, to uh, certain things depending on what the character is. So for example, Gambit being a gambler and a hustler and all that kind of stuff, the first thing he gives you is more credits uh, per drop, and the second thing is rare items, okay, which is really nice. It's a pretty cool uh, buff, things like that. Uh, one of the most important things, in my opinion, to do very early, though, is actually Cyclops. Cyclops has a wonderful synergy, especially if you're planning on doing many, many characters. Cyclops's, or, uh, Cyclops's synergy is actually an XP boost. It gets you 10% more experience while you're playing the game, regardless of who you're playing, as long as this big button is active. Okay? Very easy to do, and uh, he's actually a, a decent character to play, if I say so myself. But... You can just play him for the synergy, and it will help all of your other characters. It's a great, great investment. Okay? So that's it for the synergies. Last but certainly not least is your character inventory, and that is C. C opens up your character inventory, and this is where you see all your cool stuff. Oh, you get head out. Yay, pet. Right? So, the character inventory gives you not only what you've got currently in your possession, but also some vital statistics about your character. The vital statistics are found right here in stats. Go figure. Okay, This will tell you pretty much anything that you possibly want to know about your character. This is for all of you number crunchers out there. right? Uh, one of the most important things, or arguably one of the most important things, are these two right here. The rare item find and the special item find. The rare item find and special item find, respectively, will give you access to more cosmics, uniques, artifacts, and uru forged items. So things that are equipable are going to be rare item find, and for special item find, that'll be stuff like runes and splinters and relics, and uh, you can actually find uh, costume drops and uh, fortune cards actually drop uh, from certain enemies as well. And uh, it's, it's really, really cool, and it's a nice sort of compact uh, place for all of your character's info. And if you're interested, you've also got the bio for your uh, particular character, uh, which is kind of neat. It's a, it's a fun uh, little info thing uh, for your character. Okay? Uh, so with that, that uh, pretty much covers all of the uh, general user interface things. Uh, aside from just what else is on the screen, uh, right here we've got the chat window and uh, several tabs here, uh, which are very nice, and I'll talk uh, about more on player interaction. Down here, we've got buffs. Uh, I currently don't have any buffs active. You've got the mission tracker uh, that you can open and close, and once you get different types of missions, you can switch between them. And then right here, I know you guys have seen this uh, several times, but this is the stash, the S-T-A-S-H. So your stash window is basically where you keep all of your stuff. Once you start collecting a whole bunch, then this is where you put it all. And uh, it's really nice. Uh, part of the thing is this is a free-to-play game, uh, but if you want more room, then you got to pay for it. Okay? Uh, some of them are pretty cheap, but um, basically you're paying five bucks for another however many uh, item slots here. It can be worth it, but eh, it really depends on your opinion, how much you play, uh, all that kind of stuff. Okay? 
Uh, so that's it for the general character info and the user interface. So now I'm just going to talk uh, sort of generally about the story uh, as well as leveling. So for the story and leveling, essentially you have two options for what you want to do. Uh, you can either go through the story, just go step by step, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or you can decide that you want to just level as fast as possible and get to level 60 as quickly as you humanly can. Okay. Part of the issue with this is that they don't really coincide very well. You can't do both necessarily. All right. What I like to do, or at least what I did with my first character, is I did a little of both. Uh, what you'll see on a lot of these is, for example, let's go to chapter 7 here. Um, so you see here uh, it says that the level range is 21 to 23. Right now I am level 5. Yeah, if I were to go there, all of the AR enemies too. would be red or at the very least yellow. I'm sure at 23 they'd be red. Uh, but essentially all that it's saying is that that is not a happy place for you to be. Don't go there because it's going to hurt. Okay, And part of the thing is that if you go through the story and if you take a look at the mission log here, so we completed the prologue and then in chapter one you've got missions, you've got missions you haven't found yet, whatever it happens to be. And then you can go through and you can do all of the missions or you can just stick to the main missions which are go in, defeat whatever the boss is and then get out as quickly as you possibly can. If you do that then you'll end up being a little bit of a lower level than you would like to be for some of the later content. All right. Now that being said I highly recommend just going through the story at some point. Go through the entirety of the story, see how it is, uh, listen to the story because it is a wonderful very Marvel comic book-esque story. They did a wonderful job with it, with the writing and all of this kind of thing. And uh, not only that, but the motion comics as well are very, very good. Okay, just really, really good stuff. A lot of fun. And we'll just go in here just for funsies for a little bit. All right, but uh, like I said, as far as I'm concerned, for a first character, it's a good idea to sort of run through the story uh, just so that you can get the feel for it. Um, you can see what the story is about, how it works, all that kind of stuff. And then for your other characters, it's perfectly fine just to skip through, or you can just skip through on your first one. Okay? Now, the other obvious option is to level as quickly as humanly possible. And that's certainly relatively easy to do. All that you need is a character around my level. You don't even need to be my level at uh, level 5. You can be even lower and still do it. But uh, essentially, it's power leveling. Okay? You don't even need to call it power leveling, it's uh, something that comes up very nicely. But uh, one, one way to do it is, uh, you start off, you do the prologue obviously, and then here let's go back to the tower. And essentially what you do is you go into what are called the challenges. The challenges are places where you have a ton of mobs, you have a ton of bad guys that you can go and kill and stab and destroy and all that kind of stuff. Okay, So I'm going to go to Midtown which is... Uh, uh, one of the two challenges. Uh, the Midtown Manhattan is just a place that is populated with all sorts of bad guys. Okay, If you want to level up fast, this is what you want to do. You want to come either here or to the other challenge, which is X Defense, which I'll go to in just a little bit after I'm uh, done killing a couple guys here. So you see all these green orbs all represent experience. And already I'm earning a ton there. See, I already leveled up. Okay. This is a great, very fast way to level up your character to uh, whatever level you want to do, okay? And ideally, you want to go to level 20 at least, and I'll tell you why in just a little bit, right? So I'm going to run over uh, to the X defense just very quickly so that you can see uh, what's going on with that. But basically, either Midtown Defense or, or uh, not Midtown Defense, but Midtown Patrol or the X Defense are the two places you want to go. So right now I'm going to go into X Defense and in this case I am not going to seek other players because one of the uh, biggest issues that you can have are people who drop out of uh, this particular combat type. So I'm going to die pretty quickly here, uh, but just to show you what it's like. Uh, essentially, this is a wave tower defense uh, type of mode, and all that you do is you just sort of uh, hang out until the waves show up. There you go. Okay, and then you go in and you do whatever it says. So in this case, you see on my quest tracker it says defeat Magneto and defeat Blob. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do that real quick. 
Alright. I might die. Die, 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 die. Okay. So, essentially what this is, is this is another way that you can earn experience very, very quickly. And you can also uh, get really good items. Uh, this is a great place to go and farm for items, but I'll talk about that later on. Uh, so with that, I'm just going to go ahead and leave here uh, real quick, just uh, because it does, the rest of it doesn't need to be seen. Right? So, after this point, uh, what, what you're going to want to do is, if you're power leveling, you'll eventually get to I level 20. When you get to level 20, you're going to unlock a uh, specific a uh, specific type of mode or a specific quest type which is known as the legendary quest once you get legendary quests those are by far 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 the fastest way to level up in the entire game without a doubt okay uh, so just to demonstrate that real quick I've got one set up here for spider-man because I like spider-man and he's one of the people I was leveling up right so real quick, I'm going to uh, pop back into the Midtown Patrol here because the particular quest I'm on involves uh, several things, one of which is donation of items. So you can see here, Rogue the Cove is the name of the uh, quest that I was on. So I'm going to try to find an item real quick. And if I can't anytime soon, then I'll just go ahead and uh, get one out of my stash to donate. Uh, so we'll just beat up a couple of these guys and see if we get lucky. Okay? But, like I said, uh, once again I am in Midtown, so this is earning me a great deal of experience and in and by, by and large far more experience than I would normally be getting by simply doing all of the story missions. But again, uh, that doesn't mean you don't want to do the uh, story missions at some point. And look, I got myself a fancy uh, artifact. Thank you, game. So we'll swing back over here, and I'll go back to my enchanter to donate the item. Once I donate this, it'll complete the quest, and you can see what happens. Okay, after you donate the item, uh, or uh, finish whatever the legendary quests are, you'll get a whole bunch of experience as well as Odin Marks and a bunch of money. Uh, I'll go into Odin Marks a little bit later on, but uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, that's kind of lame. I'll go ahead and donate it. So once again, Alt right click, and uh, it doesn't count as a rare. Uh, fine. Okay, so I'll just find some uh, stupid thing that I don't really care about. There, random web shooters. Bye, random web shooters. There we go. So you see, we got these orange balls, which represent the increased experience, and then Odin marks. Okay, and Odin marks, like I said, I'll talk about a little bit later on. But uh, that's basically how you level very, very quickly: is you go through and you do all of these uh, legendary quests. Okay. The other thing, like I said, uh, one of the oh, see, I didn't even do synergies on this guy. So. Cyclops's synergy of the 10% experience is a wonderful way to level up much, much faster simply because of what it gives you. It gives you 10% additional experience. So at the very least, while you're leveling, have it equipped so that you can go through uh, at least somewhat faster. Okay. Uh, one of the other big things that you can do to increase uh, your uh, leveling ability is to level characters and not just Cyclops, but in your stats, you'll see another very nice statistic known as the Hero Synergy Bonus. Okay, The Hero Synergy Bonus is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, when you have high level characters, uh, then you increase the amount of experience uh, subsequent characters get. So the more characters you have at relatively high levels, you start off at level 30, you get 1%, and then at level uh, 50 you get 3% and then at level 60 you get the maximum uh, bonus which uh, for your first character is 30 and then 50, 65, uh, 75 and that's 5% for every level 60 after that. Okay, That is another great way to level faster is just to level more characters. If you level more characters then the ones that you are working on will go up much much faster. Okay, which is uh, a great thing and it makes it so much easier. Okay, the last uh, thing is once again, uh, the biggest things are the Midtown Manhattan and the X Defense, but you can also somewhat artificially increase the way that uh, you gain experience and that is with shots.
Okay, I know, it sounds weird, but literally, you get a boost that looks like a little shot, and it increases the amount of experience that you get. You've also got these little bars here that actually stack with one another. Okay, uh, if you eat, uh, for example, two of these, then you'll have 150% uh, for an hour instead of just 100% for an hour. Right, now, what does that mean? That means that it doubles, okay? It doesn't mean that you've got... 100% of what you normally get, it means you have 100% more, so you have twice as much as you normally would, right? Using the experience boost is an extremely great way to level up quickly. And um, one of the really nice things is that if you run through the story and you get to, I believe it is chapter 7, if I'm not mistaken, let me take a look here. Yes, if you go to chapter 7 and complete that, the reward for finishing the entirety of the chapter is an XP boost. And if you go just through the story, then you can probably get to chapter 7 and complete it right before or right as you hit level 20. And then when you can start doing legendary quests, take the boost and then just run legendaries for as long as you possibly can while you have that boost active. It makes you level up so much faster and it helps a great deal. The other note for both Midtown Manhattan and uh, to a lesser extent X-Defense, but also just in general with the story, is the types of enemies that you want to be looking at. I'm going to switch back You're to Nightcrawler here. Um, not all enemies are created equal, essentially is uh, the point. So, uh, we go back to Midtown here, and if you find certain enemies that are colored, that have an aura about them, then that means they're essentially worth more. Right, so we got a bunch of these guys, and these guys are normally gray, right, but there, basically you have the commanders, right, you notice that the commanders here are yellow. They're yellow because they're worth a lot more experience, right, and they actually drop experience orbs when they are defeated, right, because they drop experience orbs, that means that you can level up that much faster. So if you're taking the route of the fastest way to level up possible, go to Midtown, find groups of these guys, Take them out as you can, and just wait until the main guy comes down, or the main guys. So here, you see he's got his name here, Sub Commander Khan. Take him out, grab your XP orbs, and then move on. Okay? Great, great way to level up. Makes it go a lot faster if you focus on getting some of those orbs. Okay? So, the other thing that can help you out with leveling are actually several items. Okay, uh, these are items that are, uh, one of them at least is not randomly found, but uh, some of them are. Okay, one of the, uh, let's see here, let's go to my stash. So one of the best items to help out with leveling is this guy right here, the Ziggurat of Cargo. Alright, and the reason that this is such a great uh, assistant to help you with leveling is its power. It allows you to teleport when otherwise you normally wouldn't be able to. Teleporting can help you skip pretty much the entirety of most of the chapters and just get to that final boss so that you can get whatever the item bonus is. Now, the opposite side of that is that at the same time, you're not going to be able to take out those yellow and blue elites to get all of those nice happy XP orbs as you're going through the process. Okay, So it's just something to uh, sort of try to balance. But uh, once again, just to uh, sum up, you want to keep with legendary quests if you want to level up very quickly, or as an alternative, uh, instead of doing Midtown Manhattan until you reach level 20, go through the story, get to chapter 7, finish that to get the XP boost, and then start off and do all of your legendary quests. You'll still be able to level up very, very quickly, and it'll be a huge help for you. Okay? Uh, one of the other little things that I'll talk more about in player interaction is getting into a party for... Um, Midtown Manhattan. One of the things with the legendary quests is a lot of them require you to take out a certain number of a specific uh, type of mob, right? And an easier way to do that is if you have a bunch of people. If you have a lot of people in the same party around Midtown Manhattan, what's going to happen is they're all going to be able to just sort of hang out and go and uh, as they take out mobs, they're all going to count for you even if you're not right next to the person. Right? It's, a, it's another really good way to help out with the legendary quests. Right? That being said, in order to do it, all that you need is you go to nearby and if you right click on somebody, you can say friend, ignore, or whatever, or party invite. Right? And then they'll be invited to uh, 
the party and they'll either accept it or reject it, whatever it happens to be. Okay. In this particular case, though, uh, I'll touch on it more later, but uh, it's one of the things where please be polite to people and actually ask before you just say, hey, do you want to be in a party? It's just nicer and it's just common courtesy for the game. Okay. So just uh, keep it polite. Make sure that they're okay with it. All right. It's just, like I said, a common courtesy thing. And I personally like to ask people, uh, but a lot of people don't care too much. Some might, though. All right. So, uh, the last sort of thing is, I already showed it briefly, but the quest log will show you where you're at in the story as well as what your legendary quest is once you get it. I'll switch back to one of my other people here, so we'll switch back to Human Torch, who incidentally was my starting hero, right? So, uh, for him particularly, I've got uh, this uh, particular... Uh, legendary quest and it just tells you where you can find whatever it is that you need for the legendary quest what you need to complete it and as well as the rewards okay so just everything that you need to know for the quest and it will also tell you where you are in the story okay in my case obviously I jumped around a lot uh, for my super heroic run here but in the end uh, this is this will show you uh, where where you are what you need to do all of that kind of stuff it's got some great information in it if you ever get stuck L is the quest log, which is where you want to turn. All right. So with that, I'll uh, go ahead and move on to the next category, which is going to be uh, purchasing things, not only with splinters and uh, in-game currency, but also with real money. All right. So I'm switching back to Nightcrawler here simply because, again, he's my favorite character. And um, this will be about the... G's and the Eternity Splinters and just buying characters, okay? So as you can see here, we've got Eternity Splinters. In my case, I have 112, right? If we go to the Eternity Spl Splinter vendor here again, then you can see we can purchase characters, all right? Like you can get Black Panther, Black Widow, uh, all of the characters in the game are listed, okay? And they cost different numbers of Eternity Splinters. Now, as you go through, I'm sure that you guys saw, but I was picking up several of these as I was playing. I'll, I'll head back into Midtown to see if I can pick up uh, one or two just so that you can see where it goes. But basically, the way it works is Eternity Splinters will drop uh, approximately every four to five minutes, uh, depending on your ranking in... Um, uh, depending on your ranking in Special Item Find, the SIF, S-I-F, right? So the, the higher that you have, the more frequently they'll drop, even though uh, it, it could be faster than the approximate four minutes, it could be slower. Again, just depends on what you personally have. Okay, ah, there's one right now. So, like I said, depending on what you want to get, you can save these up, uh, you can uh, use them to buy characters, uh, you can also use them at uh, several of the other vendors to get a couple of different things, which I'll show you in just a little bit here. Right. Uh, one other uh, important key, by the way, is actually B, the letter B, and that is the body slider. This is sort of not quite the get out of jail free card, but go back to home base card. Right. It just takes you back to whatever hub you happen to be working off of. This is really nice if you have to go back to dump a bunch of uh, gear and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, so let's see. What was I going to do? All oh, right. Eternity Splinter Vendor. Right, so uh, one of my personal favorites is the random hero unlock. Now, this is completely random. You can get any one of the 30 heroes, and it is an even chance. You don't have a better chance to get starter heroes or cheaper heroes. You have the same chance to get Storm as you have to get Spider-Man and Deadpool. Right, that's just the, the way that it, it's set up, and I think that's really nice. Okay, uh, The other thing, you can get random cosmic item, which is pretty cool, and uh, portals to the bovine sectors, which I'll talk about later on in my endgame portion. Okay, uh, just all sorts of uh, semi-random stuff that you can get with the Eternity Splinters. And also, again, if we go to our gear vendors here, you can see you need an uh, Eternity Splinter and some credits, and you get an Epic item. Okay, so the Epic items are the purple ones that generally have some pretty good stats. Okay, so relatively cheap uh, at only a cost of one Eternity Splinter, but they do drop fairly frequently. Okay, so it's uh, sort of up to you as to whether or not you want to do them. One of the other means that you can purchase characters is with the in-game currency G. What you do is you go here to the store and you see add more G. And what this will do is this will take you to a PayPal website where you can purchase however much you want. 
Okay? So this, uh, again, is the store X. And you'll be able to buy all sorts of different stuff. You can buy just the heroes by themselves uh, for various prices, uh, primarily based on popularity. And uh, then you've got different costumes for all of the characters. So see, ooh, look, Captain America, right? And uh, the costumes are the same way where uh, depending on not necessarily how popular whatever the cost, oh, that's kind of scary. Uh, not necessarily how popular the costume is, but maybe how much work went into it, um, how frequently it's seen in the comic books, whatever it happens to be. Uh, but yeah, just, you know, uh, whatever it is. You, if you want a new costume, you can get a new costume. And again, you can go to the crafter, get your affixes, get uh, visual effects, all sorts of crazy stuff. Items. Uh, these are some just sort of random stuff. You can get uh, different pets of all different sorts. Uh, like here, you, you can get the spider ham. I myself have the symbiote spider ham here, but I actually got that as part of a fortune card, which was really cool. And uh, the, the other major thing are the cards, the fortune cards, where, like I said, it's a form of gambling. You, uh, you might get something really, really cool. You might get something really, really lame. But I personally think all of the stuff from the fortune cards is pretty good. Okay, the other big thing for the items are these boosts that I talked about earlier with the experience at least. But you can also get boosts specific for uh, rare items, uh, special items, the Sif and Rif. Uh, you can get the Iridium Triple Boost, which is all three experience and uh, Rif and Sif. Uh, you can get just all sorts of random stuff. Uh, re really neat things, but again, this costs real money. You have to buy the G, the in-game currency, and then you can purchase these. Okay, so the other thing are these bundles. The bundles will get you a character, probably at least a costume or two, and then it typically will give you the stash specific for the hero. So if we go back over here real quick to the stash, I have Nightcrawler's specific stash. So that's this right here, and it holds just his stuff. Okay, uh, that being said, if you get somebody through Eternity Splinters or through uh, the G, through the in-game currency, you don't get their stash unless you get the bundles. But what you can do is if you go to the Marvel Heroes store, the Marvel Heroes website, and you get the characters through that, then you can get a bundle that includes, again, you can get uh, one or two costumes, you get the hero themselves, uh, you might get a couple fortune cards and some retcon devices uh, depending on uh, the, the thing. But those are typically uh, start, I believe, at $18, so they're a little bit pricier, but you do get more for, uh, for the money. Okay. And uh, those are the, the main thing that you can get. My personal favorite, again, are the boosts and the cards, uh, simply because th those can give you uh, something real nice. But uh, the boosts, obviously, is a uh, fleeting fancy, as you can say. Uh, once you use it, then it's gone, uh, which kind of sucks. But I think they're worthwhile. I tend to just wait for the cards, because the cards that you can get for free by just playing the game can give you decent boosts. So I tend to just wait for those instead. Right? So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and start talking about interacting with other players and just some basic etiquette and some, um, uh, some sorry, some acronyms that you'll need to know. So once again, as far as interacting with players goes, uh, you want to start off with O, which is your social. Okay, This is the basis for interacting with a lot of people. You can see uh, where everybody is, uh, what level they are, uh, if they're prestige, all that kind of stuff. Uh, what difficulty they're on, which are uh, these three symbols right here, uh, all that kind of stuff. The other major thing is the chat. You can see, as I've been talking here, a lot of things have been coming up in the chat. You've got your party chat, which is specific to people that you have already partied with. The Super G, which is obviously the super group that you are a part of. Trade, which I'll get into uh, later on uh, a little bit, and uh, that is very specific for uh, uh, obviously trading items. And then uh, the other major one that you have, I'll switch this over, is LFG. Okay, LFG is a very popular uh, RPG acronym that stands for looking for group. In other words, it's just uh, if you're having trouble with a boss or whatever it happens to be, pop into LFG and say, hey, I need some help with this person on this difficulty. Can anybody help me out? Okay. So as, as far as just general etiquette with dealing with people, um, you want to start off with your friends in your supergroup. And if they're available, great. Okay. I, I tend to, to not use LFG a whole lot. 
unless I really don't care much about dealing with that. But I touched on this earlier where, please, before you invite anybody, just go ahead and ask. Just say, hey, is it cool if I invite you so that we can go do some legendary quests on um, in Midtown or whatever it happens to be, okay? And that way, you know, you at least give the decency of, is it okay? And then they'll say either yes or no. And that's just a good first step. It's good etiquette. It's good online etiquette. It's not something that I am extremely crazy about, but I know a decent number of people are, and I certainly appreciate it a lot more when people say, hey, can we team up and uh, do these quests or whatever it happens to be, okay? Um, as far as uh, partying up, uh, again, um, this is really ideal for doing a whole lot of things. Uh, again, doing the legendary quests, you split uh, kills, so that way everybody gets counted for the kills, and you can tell your party, hey, I'm looking for sentinels, or I'm looking for robots, whatever it is, and then people might go and seek those out for you, as well as seeking out their own legendary quest. Okay, one thing to note on the legendary quests is there is a mechanic that is designed for sharing them that unfortunately isn't in the game yet. Uh, they are working on it though. Uh, and then the other little note for the legendaries is this little button right here, reroll. Uh, if you don't like the legendary quest that you got, if you think it'll take too much time and you're trying to power level, you can reroll it, get a new one. Okay, very nice, very simple, easy peasy. Okay. Uh, other things that parties are really good for are uh, quite numerous. Um, uh, once, once again, the biggest thing is actually uh, legendary quests and then trading. Trading is very interesting in Marvel Heroes because right now there isn't a secured trading system. You can't walk up to somebody and open up an inventory that both of you have access to and say, I will give you this for this, and then you trade them, uh, as it was in Diablo 2, uh, which is uh, very similar to this. Uh, so what people will typically do is go to chapter one and go to what is called the shield training room Right if you go to this then uh, you meet up beyond the same difficulty level And this is a private room that nobody else can have access to unless you tell them that they can all right So typically what happens with the trade is you'll be in here They'll be in here you go to opposite sides of the room however you want it to work and then whatever item that you agreed to uh, trade you drop on the ground and then they'll drop theirs, you go and you get your item, they'll get their item, okay? Now, this is something that obviously can be quite fraught with a lot of issues uh, in numerous ways. Uh, I personally like to think a little bit more positively about it and that people wouldn't try to rip everybody off, but that being said, uh, Gazillion, the uh, company that ma that uh, made this game, has said on the forums that it's uh, if you go through a trade and uh, basically record everything that you're doing, so if you don't have it, get fraps, basically, then uh, essentially record the conversation between the two of you that says, I will give you this for this, and then you go to the shield training room, you drop your item, and then if they don't drop it, or if the item isn't what they said it was, whatever it happens to be, then you can uh, write you. to Gazillion, and you can show them, hey, here's the video of where I got ripped off, uh, can you guys do something about it? Which is absolutely incredible. I can't believe that they actually said they were going to do that. It's a wonderful thing for them to do. But part of the issue is that it basically means you don't trust anybody. Like I said, I'm not saying that every single person is not trustworthy, but what I am saying is that you'll get to a point where you're going to be trading some pretty high level items. And because you're trading pretty high level items, you definitely don't want to get ripped off. You don't want to be on the short end of that particular stick. It is extremely unpleasant and it's, and you just, you just don't want to do it, okay? If you can avoid getting screwed, then absolutely you want to. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and move on into what everybody loves about games like this, and that is finding all the awesome loot and uh, what you're going to do after you hit level 60, because that's what everybody cares about. So. Once you hit level 60, you've got a few options as far as uh, what you can do, and the biggest one, uh, basically, is if it's a character you really like, go ahead and find the best possible gear for them. Alright, uh, one of the uh, 
questions that comes up quite frequently is where do I go to get really good gear? Uh, I've got all this crappy gear. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go, all this kind of stuff, right? And it comes down to those two little stats, the riff and the sith, the rare item find and the special item find. Those dictate, at least to a certain extent, how many of these really nice, shiny items you're going to get, okay? And that being said, the way that Riff and Sif works is simply, it is a percentage above the normal, okay? So just like with the experience, if you have a 100% experience boost, you're getting twice as much experience as you normally would. If you have a 100% rare item find, you're going to be finding items uh, twice as often, or theoretically twice as often, as everybody else. That being said, there is what is known as the dreaded RNG, or random number generator, and that is what dictates pretty much every single thing about this game, particularly regarding what drops, when, how good it is, all of that kind of stuff. All right, Many people curse the RNG because it doesn't give you what you want when you want it. But that is just part of the game. And if you don't like that aspect, then, I mean, you can level all the characters. You can go as high as you want and not worry about gear. There's no reason to really worry about gear. But as far as being level 60, that is one of the biggest things that you can do is try to get the best of the best stuff. Okay? Now, the biggest question is, where do you go to get the best of the best stuff? All right? Uh, well, the basic things are here, once again. Uh, you can go to the challenges. Again, you can go to Midtown Patrol or X-Defense because basically what you want as far as loot, just like with experience, is you want as many mobs as possible. The more mobs you have, the higher the likelihood that they'll be dropping something good. Okay. The other thing is there are specific ones that have higher levels of uh, increased Rift and Sith. And primarily X-Defense is the one that does that. As the waves go and go and go, then you're going to get uh, more and more Rift and more and more Sith. Okay? But the problem with that is as the waves go on and on, they get harder and harder. So it can be a little bit tough. The other major thing are the terminals. Terminals are uh, sort of one-off missions that are based uh, vaguely on the story. And uh, it's a specific point where you start off, you go, you kill the boss, and then you get the boss loot, which is whatever they happen to be carrying. Okay, uh, different bosses drop different loot. They always drop a medallion. Again, this uh, little slot right here. Uh, but the red terminals are red because they're more difficult. Okay, this is a great way to get uh, end game loot. Uh, particularly here, I'll uh, swap out my characters again and I'll uh, demonstrate what we're talking about. Uh, incidentally, this is another really good uh, reason to get into a party is for terminals, uh, specifically some of the cosmic terminals, which I'll uh, talk about in uh, just a couple of minutes. All right, so I'll switch over to Cable here because I really like running the terminals with him and I'll uh, demo at least one for you. Okay, so once again, red terminals are the harder ones that give you better loot, and green terminals are easier, uh, still give you semi-decent loot, uh, but one of the things is you get these cube shards. Okay, the cube shards, once again, are uh, what you use to go and spend at the cube shard vendor, uh, which I'll uh, get back into in just a, a little bit. Right? Red terminals, like I said, that's the better loot, and cosmic terminals by far are the yeah, best really loot. So the problem with cosmic terminals are a couple of things. First off, you can only do them if you are level 60. You can't do them any other time. With red terminals or uh, green terminals, the tier 4 uh, unlocks at level 58. So not a whole lot of difference, but enough difference to make a difference. Okay? and. Uh, like I said, uh, one of the other things for this uh, that you can do is you can have a party so that you can run uh, several of these simultaneously. It p works particularly well for the cosmic terminals because one of the goals of a cosmic terminal is uh, called the bounty. It's actually a new quest. When you complete the bounty, then you get what's called a cosmic chest after you defeat the boss. All right. Unfortunately, I'm really bad at soloing the cosmic terminal, so I won't do that right now. But basically, after you just defeat the boss, then you'll get a cosmic terminal that has a much, much, much higher chance of dropping uh, not only cosmics, but basically the epic uh, gear, the purples, as well as uh, things like unique and the uru forged and all that kind of stuff. Okay, once you get to that point. Okay. And with those, what you can do if you're in a party is you can get a group of up to five people, 
you can all join together, you can all pick a cosmic terminal, everybody goes to their cosmic terminal, completes the bounty mission, and then you all take turns and you go to each other's terminals and take out the bosses. Because what happens is the bounties do not reset when you leave the cosmic terminals. What causes the cosmic terminals to reset are actually killing the bosses. So if you're there before you kill the boss and you do the bounty, then you can leave and come back with the entire party to take out the boss. Everybody gets a lot more cosmic chests and therefore a lot more loot, which is very, very nice. All right? So uh, with that, I'll go ahead and uh, run one of these terminals here. Uh, so while I'm doing that, I'll talk about a couple of the other uh, basic sort of things that you can do on Endgame. One thing that I mentioned briefly is the, uh, is the PvP, which again, I don't really do very much. I don't know why I got the exp Ah! Oh, sorry. Uh, so this is something that I'll talk about later. This is Duke. He's really cool. Okay. Um, so one of the things that you can also do is PvP, and like I said, I don't really do PvP myself uh, very frequently, but I know a lot of people who absolutely adore their PvP. They can't get enough of it, and it's so much fun, and it's so awesome, and it's this, and it's that, and it's the other. And uh, again, I, ooh, cool, I got a room. Um, and again, I personally don't really like it very much. But if you do like it, you can access it from any of the waypoints, just like I've been uh, getting onto the terminals and the challenges and all that kind of stuff. And uh, what you do is you just go in and you fight the uh, uh, other players. Okay? And the end goal of those, uh, the PvP currently at least, they've only got one uh, PvP type, and it's the Fire and Ice, uh, based on Asgard. And uh, what you do is... Essentially, you go in and you have to destroy your opponent's uh, golems, the uh, guardians of basically the other side of the map. All right? And they're always making tweaks to the PvP. It's actually something that uh, is still technically in beta. Uh, so they're still really working on uh, making sure all the characters are balanced and all that kind of good stuff. Okay? Uh, but that being said, if you like going against other players, you want to test a build that you have, or uh, if you want to try out your shiny new gear, whatever it happens to be, by all means, PvP is a good way to do it uh, once you hit higher levels, or even if you're at lower levels. Right? So we just finished that uh, particular terminal, and I got a cube shard. Okay? Now, like I said, uh, cube shards are indeed one of my favorite things, and the reason they're one of my favorite things is because you can get fortune cards from them, which is why I personally enjoy running terminals, these daily missions, right? You can use cube shards for several other things. Uh, for example, portals to Bovenheim and the uh, secret cow level or the confidential bovine sector. For those of you who are familiar with Diablo 2 or played it at all, you've probably heard of the secret cow level. This is a, an fairly obvious homage to that where you go in and there's essentially a bunch of scroll disguised as cows and you have to take out all the cows there is a ton of loot there is a ton of mobs everywhere which makes it perfect for end game loot gathering okay or pretty much any other time loot gathering although as far as the uh, cow levels are concerned you can only do them if you're really high level or relatively high levels at least all right let's see what i got for my fortune card here sweet xp boost nice Right? So again, that's why I personally run terminals, is because you can get stuff like that. And it helps you a lot. And uh, again, it's, it's free as far as the way I did it. I just ran a terminal, got my cube shards, and once you get 10, then you can purchase a, uh, a shiny new fortune card and get whatever it is that you happen to get. Okay. On that note, one of the things that you can get from the, uh, the fortune card, which I'll go back over here for, is the confidential bovine sector recipe, all right? You can see it right there. So uh, the the other interesting thing that uh, you get from the cube shard vendor is this, the ancient gourd of prestige. I'm sure that you saw at the very beginning of the video with my nightcrawler, I actually used that item. Prestige is essentially exactly what it sounds like. And what it comes down to is if you really, really enjoy playing a character, then what it does is it takes you and it loops you back around to level one. It resets your story progress, but it does not re restore your uh, story rewards. So you can't go back to Mr. Sinister and get those XP buffs again. Okay, But what you can do is you get a, a fancy looking name. In other words, it just changes the color. So you see right now I am on the second prestige with Nightcrawler. 
and my name is now purple, but not purple, blue. I'm colorblind today. All right, the other thing that you get is you get costumes. You get an additional costume. In this case, these are the two from when I prestiged uh, twice now. And those are useful because if you go to the crafter, then you can go into what is commonly called the costume grinder. And it's just create random costume. All you do is you stick in three costumes, and then you stick in what are called unstable molecules, which is a relatively rare item. And then you say create, and it spits out a completely random costume. Right? It's not even necessarily for the character you're playing. It's not even necessarily for a character that you have. It is just a completely random costume. All right. If you like to take the gambling route and you just have a bunch of extra costumes, by all means, have at it. You can get literally any of the costumes. All right. It's a pretty neat system and it can help a lot. And the end game is pretty neat. Okay. So uh, with that, like I said, the other the major things for the end game are you've got the terminals to run, particularly the cosmic terminals as far as loot is concerned. You've got the two bovine sectors, the confidential bovine sector, the original one, uh, which is recommended for uh, right around 55-ish uh, because that's where most of the enemies are. And then Bovenheim, which is the Asgardian version of the uh, confidential bovine sector. I personally haven't done that because if you didn't see, it costs either 200 cube shards or 200 eternity splinters. And I would much rather save those for fortune cards and uh, new characters respectively. But uh, the, the other major thing for uh, Endgame is leveling up legendary items. I mentioned that earlier when I was talking about vendors and that uh, essentially you can go and get legendary items. Right? I, I have to do my powers here. Uh, you can go and get legendary items from Odin's Palace. Uh, once, once you go from Odin's Palace, I don't want to do that. Once you get to Odin's Palace and you get your legendary, then like I have here, I've got my uh, gun gear or Gungnir, uh, they give you all these cool boosts, but they have to experience. And again, I am on my second prestige currently, which means I have leveled up to 60 twice with Nightcrawler and restarted, and my Gungnir is still not at its maximum potential. Okay, But that's another end game thing that you can do if you really need it. Okay, And uh, like I said, uh, PvP is the other really major uh, end game thing that you can do, or mid game, essentially any time during the game, really. And um, uh, again, you earn the the little crowns to get the PVP rings. Uh, so that's that's pretty much one of the good things with it. Uh, once you enter into the PVP, you get a uh, a set number of uh, runes uh, that you can spend. And once you've got your runes, uh, then you can spend them on boons specific uh, to the PvP match that you're in. Uh, whatever it happens to be, if you need additional uh, critical rating or if you need uh, health, whatever it happens to be, uh, then that'll help you out and it'll make you, it'll give you better survivability, it'll give you better kill times. Whatever it is that you happen to need, those runes will help you out in PvP. Okay? And uh, as far as the end game, that's pretty much it. Uh, you got the uh, the terminals, PvP, cows, uh, level additional characters. You can get um, uh, once once you level your first character, you'll have enough eternity splinters to buy a new one. Um, once uh, once you reach the uh, that point, then you can get. New character, hopefully it's Cyclops, so that you can get your XP uh, boost going. But, uh, I mean, you can test out different characters, see what you like. See if you like melee, see if you like a ranged character, see if you like a hybrid character, or you just go completely random. That's what, what I did for a very long time. Uh, I, I bought very few characters, although I did buy uh, an advanced pack uh, online. And uh, basically, all that you can do is keep leveling characters up that synergy boost and once you find somebody that you like or maybe you have your favorite character then that can become uh, what's called your main character uh, which I'll discuss uh, just a, a little bit later uh, but yeah I mean that's that's pretty much it I mean the if you've got your main character in my case I love Nightcrawler so I prestiged him because he is my favorite Marvel character of all time so I want to make sure that I can get him to the highest possible tier level all right uh, so with that I, I'll go ahead and start uh, discussing some of the newest additions to Marvel Heroes in the patch 2.2
uh, which just came out. So in patch 2.2, the major addition for it is the addition of the functional, uh, the functional enchanter, because before the enchanter was around, but it didn't actually do anything except accept donations to increase the level. Now the enchanter is active, and what you can do is you can use rune words to up certain aspects of your gear. All right, so what I'll do is I'll switch to uh, one of my level 60s here. Okay, and I've collected a few runes, uh, not too, too many. I don't think I can actually do anything with them yet. Uh, but see, you've got the, these runes. In my case, I've got Earth, I've got Bow, I've got Torch, and I've got Chalice. Okay, and depending on what runes you have, you have rune uh, words. Rune words, uh, which again, goes back to Diablo. They had a very similar enchantment system uh, for different things. So in this case, uh, you can see here the rune words say requires Uru Forged item plus uh, certain runes that you can pick up. Okay, and these give all sorts of different affixes. They give you all sorts of different bonuses, uh, just a bunch of different stuff, uh, ranging from just increased damage to increased health and increased experience, all sorts of different things. You can find a bunch of different ones. They're going to start adding dropped recipes that you can then teach your enchanter so that you can add new things, uh, but not certain when that's going to happen. The other thing is you can enchant some of your gear. So the rune words are specific for the Uru Forged things, but then you also have the enchantments. Enchantments also use the runes, but in this case they only use one rune, uh, depending on what you want. And uh, it's actually specific to whatever rune it is. So for example, year, the rune year, gives you experience uh, per enemy that you defeat, which is pretty nice. Again, you can never go wrong with additional experience. So uh, it uses either slot two, three, or four. That's what those Roman numerals represent. Okay, and that's how you can tell what they're doing. And again, you've got slot one, two, three, four, five. Okay, uh, so in my case, it seems that all I can do is two, three, and four. Uh, it's probably because my enchanter is only level 13, and I imagine once I get up to 20 or higher or whatever it happens to be, then I'll be able to do more and uh, get the other two slots available for uh, enchantment. Right? The other major thing for our enchanter is the bless. This used to be on the crafter, but now it just moved over to this guy. Right? And this uses Odin marks, just like the uh, legendary items. The legendary items cost 300 Odin marks, which is one of the awesome benefits of doing legendary quests. Uh, or you can spend them on blessings. Blessings will help you out with your artifacts. You can bless an artifact and give it a specific, um, again, affix. Right? So for example, this, the Blessing of Odin, gives 7 spirit when you defeat an enemy and grants 5% bonus uh, damage against bosses. Okay? Uh, there are different characters that you play in different ways, so uh, different blessings, different items, different artifacts uh, work better or worse depending on who it is, obviously. All right. Uh, so, uh, like I said, that, that is the real major change uh, for 2.2. They made some adjustments to, uh, what's it called, uh, X-Defense, as far as how the waves work. I, didn't, I obviously didn't go very far in X-Defense, but uh, you've got the split waves eventually, wherein you literally have two separate groups of students that you're having to protect. And um, what ends up happening is uh, you have to split up your group because if you leave one set of the students alone, they're all going to get captured and then you're going to lose the X defense and you're going to be kicked out. All right. Um, and other than that, that is pretty much it. It is, it is a, a fairly big thing because it is a completely new crafting system essentially. But now you can find the enchanter in all of the major hubs uh, in the game, uh, just like you can find all of the other uh, major vendors in every single hub. All right, so uh, that's it for uh, what's new in this particular one. And uh, with that, I'll go with uh, some of the things that are going to be coming in the at least relatively near future. So in the new, near future for Marvel Heroes, we can expect to see several things. Uh, primarily is more characters. Right now, on deck for the next character is Moon Knight. Okay, so uh, Moon Knight's going to be released sometime in February, 
And uh, after that is going to be uh, Doctor Strange. Uh, he's going to be up next. So basically they're going to have to swap him out from here. And we're going to have to say bye-bye, Doctor Strange, and hello to somebody new. Who knows who it's going to be? Uh, right now, like I said a little while ago, there are 30 characters. So there is certainly a decent roster. Uh, but basically that's something that Gazillion has said they are going to constantly be going through and through and through. Their goal is to do one character a month, which I think is... Uh, somewhat ambitious, but at the same time, I really hope that they can do it, and they've done a decent job with it thus far, so I don't really have a problem, right? One of the other major features that's going to be coming out in a little while is the Danger Room. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, the Danger Room is part of the X-Men, and basically it's part of the X-Mansion where the X-Men go and train. Okay, uh, it's uh, to, so my nerdiness showing, it's similar to like a holodeck on uh, Star Trek. And basically you go in and you uh, fight a bunch of guys. Now the danger room is a little bit different from the other instances like the terminals and things like that because with those you can have five people. With the danger room you can only have one or two. Okay, so it's either just you or you and a friend. You go in and you uh, go and you just fight and there are unique danger room bosses just like there's going to be uh, unique medals that you get from those bosses. Okay, the, the last uh, major thing that I, I wanted to talk about as far as the upcoming things is actually the one thing that I am most looking forward to, and that is raiding, right? Uh, if any of you have ever played WoW, you know all about raiding. But essentially for this game, it's gonna be a group of up to 10 people, right? One of the things about uh, Marvel Heroes is that the characters are not really specifically uh, sort of, not necessarily pigeonholed, but they don't really have roles. You don't have people that are specifically tanks. You don't have people that are specifically DPS. Uh, what you do have are hybrids thereof, and uh, you have differences as far as, like, you might have DPS at range, you might have DPS in melee, and uh, you certainly do have characters that are more tanky than others. Uh, for example, Thing or Colossus, uh, just like you have characters that are understandably a little bit squishier, like Nightcrawler here. Uh, but that being said, Gazillion has said that regardless of the team type, you will be able to complete the raids once they start up. Uh, because it's going to be focused primarily on the skill of the players rather than the composition of the actual party. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see how they implement that. I hope that they do it well. I think that they're able to based on what I've seen previously. Uh, but. Basically, that's what uh, that's one of the biggest things that we're looking at and that I'm looking forward to in the relatively near future. Okay, and uh, my, the last little thing I wanted to talk about uh, were just some general tips and tricks uh, for playing through the game, just uh, to make it a little bit more comfortable, a little bit easier. Okay. So as far as tips and tricks go, uh, uh, one of the uh, just general tips that I have, it's uh, more of common sense really, is that if you've got things like your rarity boosts and your uh, special item boosts, don't use them on low level characters, okay? Uh, if anything, use the special item boosts on, or the special item finds on low level characters, but not the rare ones, because the rarity is going to give you your equipable items, it's going to give you your Uru Forge, it's going to give you your uniques, it's going to give you your artifacts. Wait until higher levels to use those, because then you have uh, the higher level equipment, and you don't have to have, you know, three or four artifacts, or not artifacts, but three or four unique items that you're just going to end up having to grind again to get a updated version for. Uh, one thing you can do is if you go to your uh, crafter friend here, uh, one of the gear things that he can do is upgrade your uniques. Okay. Uh, as far as the level 40 is concerned, always, always, always upgrade a uh, unique to level 40. It's comparatively exceedingly cheap. Uh, but as far as the level 50 and level 60, you start adding in unstable molecules and a lot of credits, a lot of uh, just the, the base money for the game. And it is probably not worth it. It might be if you have a really, really good unique, but more than likely it's not. So as far as the rare item boosts, wait until you get to the point where you're level 60 or at least very, very high 50s, and then you can start using your rare item boosts and run those cosmic terminals, run in X defense, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to revive this guy. Huzzah! So... 
Uh, that's that's one of the biggest tips that I could give for people. Um, one one of the other things is uh, just another general tip for uh, doing your uh, what's it called? One of for the uh, legendary quests is uh, for one thing another item that I had forgotten to mention, which is uh, he's got one, which is this little guy, the Mole Man Medallion. Okay, the Mole Man Medallion is absolutely invaluable when it comes to leveling up. Okay, and uh, the way that you find it is obviously uh, taking out the Mole Man. As I'm talking, I'll go and uh, show you uh, where he is on one of my other characters. But the biggest thing for this is the increase to intelligence, because intelligence as a basic stat increases the amount of uh, experience that you get. So essentially, with an increase of two intelligence, depending on what you get, you end up with an additional 10% experience. Uh, depending on how high it is, all right? In, in Nightcrawler's case, the intellect is relatively low, so I will get an experience boost. But after you get to a certain point, uh, let's see, three, four, five, six. Uh, once you get an intellect of six, then you're maxed out on the bonus to experience. If you're below that, oh, cool, yay, uh, random experience. Uh, if you're maxed out on the experience from the intelligence, then the Mole Man Medallion obviously doesn't help a great deal. But if you're not, then this is extremely good because it's basically like having another Cyclops synergy. Okay? Uh, so like I said, with that, I'll go ahead and head back up here so that I can swap out. And uh, just continuing on with some of the, the little hints. Uh, one of the other ones, it's not necessarily a hint for the game, but more like just in general, uh, what you're looking for is going to be on the forums as well as on the website marvelbase.com. So the forums for this game are actually accessed through the Marvel Heroes website and that'll give you a ton of information. All right, It's just like the, the help menu that I showed you earlier here, this guy, except it's something where you can directly ask people and say, hey, how do I do this? How do I find this? whatever it happens to be. You can also do that on the social channel on the chat. The social is essentially just talk about whatever you want. Uh, and you can say stuff like, hey, what, do, what does uh, Riff and Sif do? Uh, how do I find this person? How do I switch difficulties? Whatever it is that you need help with. Right? But on the forums, it's a lot, lot nicer. It's so much more helpful. If you find a bug, if you uh, really need help with a build, uh, whatever it happens to be, then you can go on the forums, figure it out. And not only that, but the developers are actually extremely active on the forums, and they will jump in and help you out with the vast majority of any questions that you've got. Right, so extremely good, extremely nice, extremely helpful. Okay, and I keep forgetting that I was uh, gonna go and uh, do this thing for um, for a moment. So what you want is uh, chapter four at the lower east side in order to get the uh, Mole Man medallion. And at least I believe it is. Let's see here. No, nope, that's the wrong one. Eh, it is chapter uh, seven, eight, nine, six. See now I can't even remember. It must be lower than. Oi, I'm so confused. Oh, that's what it is. Huh, I fail. I just went to the wrong side. Bleh. So it's uh, the Upper East Side, which is a waypoint in Chapter 4. There we go. Much better. Okay. So there we go. Do, 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 do. Uh, while I'm doing this, one of the other nice tips that I can do, uh, actually relating to all of that happy, nice stuff, uh, as far as the waypoints are concerned, is that... Sorry, let me take these guys out real quick. I still don't understand why Human Torch can destroy Lava Man. Uh, but as you are starting to level up other characters, if you go through and you do the story, then it becomes much, much, much easier to give yourself waypoints. Uh, for example, if you've got one character that has every single waypoint in the story, then that is the only character that really needs to have every single waypoint in the story. Uh, once you get to the point where you know you you really have to do, uh, for example, the Mr. Sinister, which I always recommend. Ooh, uh, this is good for for another tip. Uh, when you get to Mr. Sinister to uh, to get all those nice happy uh, XP boosts, then it would be really nice if you don't have to worry about uh, dealing with going back and finding the waypoint and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, so. Let's see. Good. Uh, no. 
uh, you don't have to worry about going back and finding all the waypoints. What you can do is you can just open this up and swap out to the other person, okay? And then they'll get the waypoint and you're done and golden and happy, okay? Now, uh, the, one of the other biggest tips is the little guy that I just took out. Uh, his name is Duke. He's a sort of a stumpy looking green guy that you'll run into on occasion as you're playing this game. And uh, he is actually an X-Men character uh, who is famous for essentially having a stomach that's in another dimension so he can store basically unlimited stuff in it. I think it's kind of weird, but for the purposes of this game, he's basically a loot pinata. Anytime you run into him, take him out. Uh, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter what it is you're doing at the time. If you see a dupe, go ahead and take him down. If you do that, then you will be very happy. All right. So we're here at the Collapse Subway. This is where the Mole Man is. And it's actually a very linear path. And if you go down here, then you go, 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 go. Then you'll find uh, the bad guys that you need to take out. And then you'll be happy, well, and good, and well on your way to your Mole Man medallion, which will, again, help you with your uh, legendary quests and uh, getting all of those happy, nice things. Another uh, little tip for legendary quests is that a lot of times the legendary quests will... Uh, take you into the story mode. This is something that I actually tend to enjoy doing because it's like killing two birds with one stone. Uh, if you're not running directly through the story and if you are just focusing on the... Uh, if you're focusing on the... Can I do that? I don't think so. Uh, if you just focus on legendary quests, then it makes it much, much easier to sort of do both at the same time. Because... Oh, Nightcrawler. Uh, you, you can end up doing a story mission as well as doing your legendary quests. A lot of times the legendary quests involve the very end of uh, whatever, um, uh, whatever chapter you happen to be in. And because it happens at the very end of the chapter, that means that you can just go in, take out the boss, and you're done with the quest, and you get the reward, and happy, happy, happy. Okay? Uh, so that's a, another quick little uh, tip for the legendary questing. And uh, last but absolutely not least, arguably the most useful tip or hint or whatever you want to call it that I can give you is as follows. I have here in my inventory a whole bunch of stuff that I really can't use, so a lot of it I'm going to donate. How is that? That's terrible. Uh, so get rid of a bunch of this. And part of the thing is that you're going to end up having a lot of characters and you're going to be picking up stuff for a lot of them. Uh, a lot of times the, the loot is primarily focused on whatever character you're playing at the time, but you can get loot for other characters that you either own or don't own. And the thing with that is a lot of times you'll have items equipped. You'll have, uh, for example, this relic here uh, that I either don't want for Nightcrawler or I've already got it on another character. So I've got two options. I can either put it in the stash for later. I can swap out for a Human Torch who happens to be using this uh, particular relic. Or you can do this little trick. If you open up your character window with C and your hero roster with T, then all you need to do is click on the hero on the roster and it switches to the inventory for that character. And now I can take the relic, put it on him, and done. And now, back to Nightcrawler. So much easier, especially when you get into a lot more characters, all right? It makes it much, much easier to deal with your inventory and organize everything, all that kind of stuff. So, so, so much better, okay? Uh, since, uh, since I was just on the subject, one other uh, thing for the legendary quest, another item-based thing, or uh, even power-based, depending on your character, is spirit. Right? A lot of characters tend to use a lot of spirit, so if you have things that either increase your spirit regeneration, give you more spirit, or both, whatever it happens to be, then by all means, please use them. Uh, one of the uh, nice ones is the Super Soldier Serum, which gives you not only additional spirit, but additional spirit regeneration. Okay? If you can get something like that at a relatively low level, and you're doing legendary quests for the purpose of leveling, it will help you massively. It will it will shave a lot of time just standing around waiting for you to be able to use your powers, basically. Okay? And uh, with that, that's uh, sort of all the, uh, the little tips and tricks that I have. And uh, now I'll just sort of go into uh, some final thoughts on the game itself.
So some uh, just general final thoughts for uh, this game as a whole. Uh, I've I've been playing it for a decent amount of time, not a not a whole lot. Uh, people have certainly been playing it for longer than me, and others have not been playing it uh, as long as me. But overall, what I've found and what many people have said is that, in general, it is a great game. It's a lot of fun to play. It's a very well-done ARPG, an action RPG as a whole. And not only that, but it is an extremely well-done free-to-play game. I think that they did a lot of things correctly with this as far as uh, dealing with how, what you pay for, how you can pay for it, and what you get in return. In this case, not paying for anything doesn't put you necessarily at a disadvantage. Instead, it just means that instead of getting a hero right away, you have to wait a little bit so that you can get all of those Eternity Splinters to unlock them. Right? Not nearly as big of a deal as it seems. The biggest thing, uh, the biggest gripe that I would have are the stash tabs. Once you really start getting a lot of characters and you start collecting all this stuff, it becomes very, very hard to keep it all in one spot, okay? Uh, so that's why I, I myself have unlocked two additional stash tabs of the, the general type, and then I've got the one crafting. Uh, but, I mean, it's, it's very difficult to not buy all of these. And uh, they are relatively expensive, so that's the one gripe as far as the, uh, the payment that I would have. Um, well, and uh, the, the other uh, great thing about this is really all it comes down to is do whatever you want. That's what makes it a wonderful game, extremely fun, and just a great time in general. Uh, if you don't want to min-max your character, like if you don't want to get all of the absolute best stuff and get rid of all of the absolute worst stuff, then you can. Uh, you, you don't have to do that. Uh, for example, with the powers, uh, you can look on uh, the website that I mentioned just a little while ago, Marvel Base, and uh, you can see what powers you like, what powers you don't like. You can find what is arguably a perfect build for your character. But what I like to do is just say, okay, I've got this character. How do I want to play this character? I mean, I really like Nightcrawler. I enjoy using the sword techniques with Nightcrawler. Uh, they're, they're fun for me. It's how I enjoy playing the character. I, uh, I like doing the, the teleportation, and I like being able to swipe around with the swords. I mean, it's probably a fairly typical experience with him, or a typical like with him, but I really don't care. That's just how I like to play. Uh, eventually, uh, am I going to want to optimize him particularly? Of course. He's my favorite character, and I want to be the best that I can with him. Uh, but if you don't want to... If you just want to play the game, get whatever gear you can, not really care about what it is, where it comes from, how good or how bad it is, then do it. It's great. That's why this game is so much fun. It's so accessible. Um, so it comes down to whatever you personally enjoy as a gamer, just do it. Have fun, play the game, and be happy being in the Marvel Universe. So with that, I hope that uh, my video here has helped uh, both uh, new and old players alike uh, with some of the aspects of Marvel Heroes 2.2. And uh, with that, uh, please let me know what you think. Uh, if you want to add anything, feel free to leave comments, uh, whatever you want to do. And with that, I will see you next time. PlayStation on J with the Metal Gear Solid to check and play And from Omega Bells to Resident Evil Just play for the fun Cause we got it going on